everyone. Um, good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast or if you're joining us from overseas and uh, good morning, midday for those of us on uh, the West Coast. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Ashley Koff. I'm a registered dietitian and CEO of the Better Nutrition Program. And I first just want to really thank you for your time. Um, as a healthcare practitioner, I know every second of our time is uh, accounted for and so valuable. So thank you. And I really hope to honor you by providing as much value for each of those seconds today as possible. To that end, I'm going to keep our questions for the end. Um, and I also want to remind you if something pops up like on your screen or you have to go or you lose sound because you're watching somewhere uh, and trying to fit it all in, um, do not worry, you will get the link um, so that you can watch us at a time that is better for you. And if you are not joining us live and you are watching at a time that is better for you, I will both be providing my information um, to everyone here. So if you have a specific question about your practice that I can help you with, um, as well as answering any questions uh, that the full script team sends over to me. So I, it, without further ado, we'll dive right in, and that would begin with a huge thank you to Fullscript um, and, and Natural Partners for inviting me to have this conversation with you about better women's nutrition from A to Z. As I mentioned, we are not going to go through the whole alphabet today, but we are going to really focus on what women need and what you need to help her create her better nutrition plan. Um, so let's let's dive in on that. Um, and if you do have questions, please start throwing them in. I will be looking at those questions. I may be able to answer them as part of what I'm communicating. Certainly, if you have any functional questions um, as it relates to the technology or hearing us or any of that stuff, um, the team helping me will also be able to answer those in the moment. And otherwise, I'll take all the questions at the end. So our agenda today um, is really to go through what does every woman want, um, all of us, and uh, what is keeping her from it? We really want to understand the problems. and then. What what nutrients does she actually need uh, for digestion, for heart health, for stress, for skin, for hormones, really all of the core issues that women are looking to address today. And then finally, what is her better health recipe? And as I drop to the bottom, just a reminder also that um, I am happy to have you share any of this content. If you want to screen grab it, I love connecting with you. So does Fullscript and Natural Partners on social media. Just a reminder that this material is copywritten. Um, so if you want to use it in any presentation after this, please let let us know. And uh, if you want to learn more about our program, you've got my information there. Okay. So moving forward, for those of you that don't know me, I wish we could be seeing each other eye to eye right now. Um, and I hope at an upcoming conference or wherever, uh, if you want to just do a virtual coffee that you'll set up some time with me. I am a healthcare practitioner, about 20 years plus. I never wanted to be a dietitian. I wanted to be Angela Bauer from Who's the Boss. I loved advertising. And I probably also loved that Tony Danza was home taking care of the kids and uh, dealing with the dog and all of that good stuff. Um, but my advertising days were limited limited really by my own uh, health needs and health goals um, and in overcoming those and or not overcoming those really learning about and developing my own nutrition uh, better nutrition plan, um, I just became so passionate about doing this and helping others. Um, and for the last about five plus years, um, so I was actually based in Los Angeles after my residency and practice and practicing here. Um, at about five and a half, five years ago, um, I was the California State Representative for the Let's Move campaign, and I decided to move to Washington, D.C. Uh, with this whole mission of changing lives, um, you know, through our government. Uh, that didn't work out. Um, so uh, we, I'm working on and now have created the Better Nutrition program uh, to try to have public-private partnerships and really address the lack of better nutrition assessment tools. Um, but I also work with individual practitioners on helping to um, optimize your practice. Um, so that's something I've been doing for the last five years. So um, I love, uh, you know, speaking as many of you do, um, it, you know, speaking in front of large groups and um, you know, probably about five or six years ago, I started asking everyone, what do we want? And the answer is never better nutrition. If we could answer um, that, you know, if we could get the better health that we all want, that every one of us wants, um, we and we didn't have to, you know, have better nutrition, we could eat whatever, we would totally be eating whatever. But the fact of the matter today is we know that the answer is not just vegan or paleo or fasting or juices, even though everybody is so overwhelmed with all these different uh, answers and options options, we know that the answer um, is actually better nutrition, and we'll talk about what that means. So 
when it comes to, I want to dive right in. And again, I've got the question box open. So if anybody has any questions that are popping up right away, um, but here's the magic. So the five nutrients that every woman needs daily, every one of us for better digestion, for heart health, skin, hormones, women need magnesium, gamma linoleic fatty acid. I like to call that the glamour fatty acid, right? That omega-6 that helps our hair, skin, and nails and helps our hormones um, run better and, you know, is so important. And and quite honestly, is so elusive, and we'll, we'll talk about that part. Um, also, really important for us to get in glutamine to make sure, you know, we know today that digestive health isn't just about dropping in a probiotic, that we have to make sure that the mucosal layer of our digestive tract is running better, and that, you know, many of us have had, many women have had so many different things happen in their lives that affect the health of that mucosal layer. So glutamine is so important as um, we call it a conditionally essential amino acid, and I kind of say that with a little chuckle, because like the conditions of life are making it a pretty essential amino acid. Um, folate, so we can get into the whole conversation about folic acid and folate and coenzyme Q10, so unbelievably critical. And it's, of course, as we age, we're not getting in as much of that. So um, with a show of hands, or if you want to answer in your uh, in the question box, I'm wondering how many of you agree with me that these are the five nutrients that all women need daily. Um, we are going to focus on these five nutrients because all women need them daily to address, you know, digestion, skin, heart health, um, you know, so, uh, and she said, uh, Kathy saying, so Emily saying yes, Kathy is saying that some were not on her list and Emily's adding in probiotics. Does anybody else have any other comments? I mean, these are the five nutrients that, you know, we know and we've got glutamine sends my, okay, so somebody else has got uh, a comment about glutamine. Um, so, okay, so we'll move along. And if anybody has any other comments about these five nutrients, um, I want to comment that okay, guys, guys and gals, I played a little bit of a trick on us. You know, when we do something like how to get the top five nutrients or these are the top five nutrients that women need every day, it actually scores an SEO score of an absolute A+. plus. If you use Headline Analyzer, you know, to develop um, top headlines for your emails or for uh, your, your, um, your blog posts, for any of your communications, you would actually, if you entered that in, you might score a 75 and 80 you would get like big thumbs up. And for those of you that don't know, that's a tool you can use to see how your headline is going to score. But the problem is, is that when we identify those as the top five nutrients that every woman needs for better skin, digestion, heart health, et cetera, it, we actually score a D minus. And a D minus is where our country is at from a women's health standpoint. So, you know, what I want to do today is actually really hone in on one of the most massive problems that we have from a women's health standpoint. We are not making it easy for women to get and stay healthy. And I'm going to use the proverbial we a lot today. The reason I'm going to use that we um, and Sarah, like through in calcium and magnesium and vitamin D and all this other stuff is because you amazing, my colleagues, like you guys are my amazing practitioners, you know, we don't just get to pick a couple of nutrients and say that everybody needs it. But unfortunately, that's a lot of the communication that's out there. In fact, there is so much information out there that one of the, the terms that I didn't coin the term, but I use all the time in my practice is infobesity. We have an infobesity epidemic that far, far surpasses our obesity epidemic. We are, we are overwhelmed, stressed, and irritated um, in our digestion, in our brains, in our heart, in our energy because of all of the information that's out there. And we know there's conflicting information out there. We know that there's body part-based information instead of integrative or functional or bringing the whole body together. We also know that there's women that's, there's information that's just based on all women being the same. Look, I have a 52-year-old that just had twins, right, as a client, legitimately, twins, um, she just had it at 52. She has more in common than somebody who just had twins, you know, than a woman that just had twins, you know, maybe 20 years um, her junior, whereas somebody else who maybe had um, surgery, who went through early menopause, uh, has more in common with somebody her age. So we can't make age-based recommendations. We can't make these generalized recommendations. And because we're getting this information, we're getting women or we're meeting women when they are having Having, having exposure to all this information, they're frustrated and they are wasting their resources and they're not getting better. And they are coming to you as that woman. 
So what I want to focus on today is how do we, um, in Fabisi, thanks Emily, um, how do we um, personalize her nutrition plan? What I want to help you do is take the information, the knowledge, you guys are the experts. As experts, I define experts, um, I should back up and say that as I've um, been doing lectures and webinars and, uh, and uh, interviews over the, the course of the last four or five years, one of the things I found most valuable is that I start off with a lexicon uh, discussion, a better nutrition lexicon. And so here I'm going to actually describe, define what I mean by expert. So you all are the experts because you have the knowledge, you have, you know, you've got the education, you've got the knowledge, but you also have the experience applying it. So you have the H factor, you have the human factor factor. And so your expertise is specifically what women need. And what I want to do is help make it easier and really effective for you to personalize nutrition plans for women, because you can be the tool that they discover, that they're able to use, that they're able to become empowered and proficient at using so that they can actually create their healthier lives. So to do all of that, we want to identify what her body needs to run better. And to do that, we need to evaluate what's already better yay we want to keep that right we don't want to start her on a new program that starts everything all over what we want to do is keep what's already better identify what needs to be better make some decisions about what could be those biggest wins and how we can make that better and add that on top of what is already better so we develop a plan to help her make better nutrition choices more often we implement and track that and then we rework it as needed and that's what we're going to go through today Okay, so just pausing for a second. If anybody has any questions, again, feel free to share them in here. But what we are going to do is figure out how do we actually identify what her body needs to run better. And this is where for me in Washington, DC, and certainly for me as a practitioner over the last 20 years, this is where I was like, we have got to have something better because there are a lot of tools that are out there. There's more and more stuff coming out every day, like new ways to track things. Now you can take photos of your food and upload them and you get the macros associated with them or you can do genetic testing you can you know check in on genomics like there are all these things that we can do however the current situation is actually not better for our practitioners ourselves and for our patients and that's because we're not getting these better nutrition assessments prior to consults we might have not not even have time to do a full nutrition assessment during the consult i've already talked about infobesity and it is real there is actually research being done, not that any of us even needs that research to understand that it's actually negatively impacting efforts and outcomes. So if, I, if, I, if we as practitioners trade on information, share information with our patients, as opposed to becoming a tool that they can use, we actually don't help them um, vet their information and get those better outcomes. Patients are not sharing their full info. In fact, they have a total expectation that we are mind readers. <laughs> they come in and expect us to know exactly what it is um, that they are taking in and putting on every day. Um, I, my favorite is like, I always say like, you totally expect me to be a mind reader, especially when it comes to supplements. If you say calcium, you're taking calcium, you expect me to know exactly what is in your calcium bottle. We also know that you know current health checkups are not improving outcomes. BMI so totally does not accurately predict health status. Um, and factors such as genetics, how the body uses nutrients is not actually even going to help us understand what is actually impacting health. So it's 2019, there has to be something better. Well, I like to use this expression all the time um, because I love when things visually, and Robert, I will get into SpectraCell. Um, I'll talk about the different labs. They can be super helpful. I can talk about it right now. Labs can be really, really helpful to tell you parts of what's going on, but I'll use the example of magnesium. You know, if we do a blood test of magnesium, only about 1% of our magnesium is meant to be in our blood, right? So what? how do we know if all of our other cells are getting in enough magnesium so that the body doesn't have to choose where the stress response get, gets turned off, right? Because that's what happens, that's one of magnesium's role at the cellular level. And the answer is we're not going to know perfectly, but we can know a lot better when we do a better nutrition assessment, and I'll get in there 
get into that. But thank you for that question. So I just love how this lines up. I like to say you can't get there without knowing here. So the example is, have you ever tried to use your GPS, um, setting your GP, excuse me, have you ever tried to use like Uber or Lyft or use your GPS without entering your current location? It literally doesn't work. You can't turn it on. I've tried it before. You know, you have to enter in a current location. Well, your patient is doing it daily. And the question is, are you? Your patient daily is waking up in the morning and saying, like, I just met with a woman this morning. And she's like, oh, when I'm back to my healthy weight, then, you know, we can decide if I'm going to have another child. And when I'm back to my healthy weight, we're going to be doing this. And, and she knows exactly where she wants to be, but she has no idea what we had to talk with and figure out where is she today. And where she is today is that her digestion is a hot mess. So we cannot focus on even weight loss stuff. We have to start focusing on uh, digestion. And so one of the things that we need, one of the reasons we need better nutrition assessments is that they are like turning on your location settings. We need to be able to do that. So most nutrition assessments that were that are provided for us, no matter how high tech or low tech they are, fall under the poor and the okay category. Now, most of you who are have joined today are in the definitely trying in the okay category. Um, you may be doing your best in, to get into the better category. I just want to make it easier for all of us to check all those boxes in the better category. So foods and beverages, we might be doing okay. We might have the patient fill out a food journal, um, but how specific are we getting on those individual foods and ingredients? And how do we know, you know, today these, these beverages have all these functional ingredients in them. And, you know, they're, um, I know because I, I work with a couple of beverage companies, um, um, and, you know, we're always changing ingredients or have new products coming out. And, you know, so that's important. Now, most of the time, nutrition or food journals do not include anything about supplements. This is going to become really important when I share my uh, case study with you. Um, or we might ask about supplements and you might find out a multivitamin and a fish oil. But did you know that most adults do not consider fiber as a supplement, protein powder as a supplement, even probiotics as a supplement when they're asked to, of what to report, you know, when they say, do you take Take supplements on that part. And certainly many people are not thinking about their skin creams and other things. Um, most assessments today include things related to health. So looking at labs and genetics and things like that. Um, so, you know, most in the or in, in that category, many are looking at weight for height, maybe even body composition. Many are looking at age and gender. So we'll ask, you know, a very common thing will be to ask, like, are you a man or a woman? Or we might know that just on, on appearance. And of course, we have to ask how somebody identifies as opposed to also under understanding how their, um, what their physiology is in that moment. Um, and then we may, you know, hopefully people are asking, I know we are as practitioners, especially those that are involved in um, looking at uh, um, integrative health are asking about medications, but what about preferences? What about lifestyle? These are going to become so important as we look at how we can actually help her succeed. So there is always a better first step in every single conversation with every patient, wherever you are. I brought this up as it relates to um, the conversation that I had this morning with one of my patients. You cannot be healthy without better digestion. I think that is so unbelievably important for us to just remind ourselves. I know all of you know it. I know you're asking questions about digestion. Part of the problem is though, if we ask questions about digestion when we're just with our patients in that moment, we may not get the answers that the full extent of answers that we need. And so one of the things, one of the reasons that we like to use the Better Nutrition Digestive Evaluation, which I created with um, several practitioners, is that we want to be able to ask the questions ahead of time so that when a patient comes in, we can actually know some of these things about them already. It's just going to make it easier for us, easier for them. And so for you know most of you, I would imagine that you are using intake forms. And so it comes really easy. And Maureen, I want to go back. Maureen had a question about, thank you, um, had a question about uh, here, preferences. So um, there are things that people are doing all the time as it relates to their nutrition that are about preferences. So I prefer not to cook during the week. Um, I prefer to avoid gluten. I don't need to avoid gluten, but I prefer. I may prefer for religious reasons um, to avoid uh, you know, certain things. I may 
prefer to, um, you know, uh, go, go have liquid nutrition during the week, you know, these kinds of things. So by preferences, Maureen, what I'm referencing are things that don't have a medical component to them per se, but are things that are preferences for the individual. And we ask about in all of our better nutrition assessment tools, we ask about preferences in a very um, bland, uh, hopefully uh, non-leading um, way, uh, just to be able to explore what somebody's preferences are, because that is going to help us create a bigger win for them. Because when it mat when our recommendations match their preferences, we can actually um, know that they're more likely to implement uh, what it is that we're working on. So. Um, that is the preferences piece. So coming back to why do I focus on this? Well, if you took nothing else out of this conversation, um, and if I took you all the way back, um, cruise directing here to here, if I took you back all the way here, um, one of the reasons that we could even identify the role of these five nutrients is because they're all going to play a role in better digestive health. And really, for better um, heart health, for better skin, for better hormones, for cancer prevention, for everything that we're trying to do, we know digestion is at the core of it. And so what we want to focus on in every instance, and it really could even just be your base intake form, is to actually focus on digestion. So um, rather than thinking about a nutrient that someone needs, what we want to actually figure out is, can nutrients actually get where they need to go today? And that is going to be so critical because if nutrients can't get where they need to go, it doesn't matter what nutrient we're actually recommending. So I like to say to people, I always get a chuckle, but we're given a lot of like credit stickers, you know, A pluses, emojis, um, especially on places like Instagram for kale smoothies, right? or for a beautiful acai bowl. But what if those nutrients aren't getting where they need to go? We shouldn't only be giving credit if we could find out after somebody has consumed that, you know, a couple hours later, a couple days later, did the nutrients get where they need to go? And we know that that also depends on not just over, you know, better digestion, but it's things like potassium, you know, which escorts water inside the cells and takes the nutrients with it, et cetera. And I'll get into that in a moment. But the most important thing that you can discover before you make any nutrient recommendation, any nutrient recommendation, is that you've got to make sure that the digestive system is working better. Now said differently, what you can identify when you understand someone's digestion is what is the biggest win for that moving forward? And thanks for checking in on me, Cam. I see that. Um, I appreciate the thumbs up. And so what we want to do on this part is really make sure that the starting point for us is not thinking about what nutrients could somebody need. A better nutrition plan is actually not first and foremost about what nutrients does someone do we need to add in. It's got to be about are those nutrients getting where they need to go. And that, of course, in terms of tuning up digestion, can uh, be nutrient specific. So um, I'm going to go through some of the better um, next steps that we have, and I'm highlighting just some of our um, quizzes that help with the evaluation of those nutrients. So let's say that you do the digestive evaluation and you figure out, you know what, this person's digestion isn't better. There are things that we can work on. Then you're better next step with them. Um, now, it could be a referral to a gastroenterologist if there are things that need to be checked out. Of course, of course, of course. Um, but it also could be deciding to tune up digestion. And what's great about focusing on that is you can give them a specific time frame, you know, whether it's four to six weeks. I like to use a six-week mark. Um, I've been doing digestive tune-ups. Um, well, I started with myself about 22 years ago, um, but uh, I've been doing them for the last 20 years. And I like the six-week mark, especially for women, because it takes us through it least one cycle of hormonal shifts. Um typically. Uh, and it also um, gives us enough time to move the digestive system, hopefully from wherever they are to about 40 to 50 percent better. Um, and that's, um, you know, that can be really significant for someone. I'm very clear when I'm talking about six weeks that I'm not talking about you will be better. But some of the nutrients that we talked about in the beginning are ones that are included in the digestive tune-up, making sure that you are paying attention to, remember, I've taught with digestion, we're talking about all the different jobs that fall under 
digestion. So nutritionally, what might we need? We talked about glutamine. Um, we can look at what are the nutrients um, that we may need to focus on to help that mucosal layer absorb nutrients better, assess and, you know, the alarm bells to go off, especially in the case of an autoimmune situation. You know, maybe we need to really be looking at the essential fatty acids and on that part, maybe we need to be calming down some of the inflammation. Um, so that could be included in there. I'm a massive fan of magnesium. So I, I almost always have as a better ne uh, next step, uh, focusing on if, assessing if we're getting in enough magnesium. Part of it is with magnesium and potassium, we are disasters at, at the national level in terms of, you know, 70, 80, 90% uh, of adults not getting in enough of those nutrients. And they're so important for um, our, uh, you know, how we're helping our bodies run better. Um, but, you know, somebody mentioned before probiotics, right? And so we might want to drop in a probiotic there, but if we're dropping a probiotic into a house that isn't um, set up to help that probiotic thrive, we're not going to see those better results. So that might be prebiotics and probiotics. It might also be, as I was talking about, the nutrients for um, healing the digestive tract. So some of my absolute favorites in that part are going to come up in the case study, but I'm a massive fan of glutagenics. Um, so the glutamine, um, the decoceryzinated licorice, the aloe, uh, blending those together, I just find it works great, especially for someone who on their digestive evaluation communicated that things are going in the wrong direction. Um, that's a really important, you know, if they've got reflux, uh, especially if they've got acid reflux going on. Um, also things like, um, you know, being able to get in, is, is there a difference between a powdered magnesium and a, um, a tablet or a citrate versus a glycinate versus an oxide and kind of going through those pieces. So um, your better next steps after the digestive evaluation, your digestive evaluation will reveal a lot of that, as will, of course, all the other work that you're doing. So I'm not suggesting on any level that we get rid of current assessments like laboratory testing, like you were mentioning the spectra cell, you know, assessing body composition, asking about preferences, all these other things. But we need to make sure that we're adding in the better nutrient assessment um, fully. So what I wanted to do now is actually go through a case study and explain how this could all work. Um, and this will take, just for a time check, this should take me about 10, 10 to 12 minutes on this part to go through it. Um, and then I wanted to be available to answer more of your questions. So um, just checking in with everybody that we're, that we're tracking. If you have any questions that are popping up and you want me to answer them, uh, uh, do let me know. So Susan is probably like a lot of women um, that come through to your office, depending on um, who you are working with. Um, but Susan was someone that I met at age 54, a very busy, high-powered executive. Um, she uh, She's just awesome. I actually loved her energy. Um, she, we had great conversations. She travels overseas regularly for work. Um, but she came in because she was had some stuff going on. She was referred by her physician um, who said, uh, you know, I am ready to put her on blood pressure medication. And Susan put up a pretty big stink and said, hey, I get that that's where you want to take me. You know, I understand that that's my family history. Um, I, I, I just, she was just feeling really emotional about starting to take medication at this point and was wondering if there was anything else she could do. And I, I was joking with her. I'm like, yeah, so the thought of taking blood pressure medication has actually increased your stress level. So when you, from the time that you left your doctor to when you're seeing me, your stress has gone up about taking blood pressure medication. Um, so we really have to, you know, work on this pretty quickly. Um, so her family history does include heart disease on both sides. Um, there was an early heart attack um, and uh, on one side and um, uh, somebody else had had surgery and somebody else, I mean, she just kind of went through that part. Uh, she was actively in menopause and sort of like that peri, uh, she feels like she's done with the, the hormone fluctuations, but she was in there and she's really frustrated. She's always been a healthy weight and never had a belly. And she's like, I've gained about five pounds and in particular in my belly. And one of the things that stresses me out all the time is that I'm a regular, I regularly work out. Um, I'm exercising a lot. She does spinning. So she was doing soul cycling. Um, she uh, gets regular massages. Um, she was uh, doing some strength training with a different trainer. Um, and then she also had somebody that she was doing like, um, um, I think it was a Tai Chi or Jiu Jitsu, but she was definitely a lot of exercising going on and nothing was working in terms of the, the belly fat loss that um, had come on post uh, sort of through this. She was saying it was probably about the last eight years um, through the hormonal change. She did have a history as a smoker. She quit at age 34. Um, she takes a multivitamin and a fish oil. So her doctor had asked her about supplements um, and he said, great, keep the multivitamin and the fish oil. 
And um, she did say that she occasionally uh, takes Ambien for sleep um, because especially with travel and changing locations um, a lot, uh, but also sometimes at home, she just said she just like after a couple nights of not sleeping, she's just like, I need that Ambien um, so uh, because I just finally need a good night's sleep. And um, she presented, as I said, with high blood pressure. She also presented with some anemia. Um, and it was significant enough, you know, sometimes I'm okay for people, for women to dance. I don't know about for you as practitioners, but to sort of dance being a little bit low um, on the iron side, but she was um, clinically anemic. And so we were looking at that part. Um, her doctor was uh, comfortable right now with the anemia. Her multivitamin had iron in it. And so she was, um, he said, let's just keep that, but we may need to add an iron. And um, she just reported a high level of stress recently. And so her doctor had definitely agreed, you know, stress reduction was um, on the prescription pad. Um, you know, yes, she already gets uh, massages um, and, you know, does the meditation, the, the exercise, the Tai Chi, et cetera. But, um, you know, if, one of the things that he was advising is you really need to focus on stress reduction. And her nutrition assessment uh, coming in uh, to the doctor was she's following a low carb. She's been trying to lose the weight. And so she's following low carb carb, uh, plant-based diet. She does enjoy wine, so she loves to have wine at night. She finds it also relaxes her. Not really big into sweets. Um, she avoids gluten and dairy. She just thinks that they don't necessarily agree with her. And because of work and also just uh, stress and they don't have kids at home uh, currently, uh, they eat out a lot. So a better case study. So this is what I want us to understand. This is the power of actually do using better nutrition assessments to develop a customized plan for her that she can implement and help her move forward with better. So I'm actually taking you through, hopefully there's not any private information. Well, there's my mobile phone number. So uh, if anyone um, needs to reach me, there's my mobile phone number, but uh, I do offer that out for my patients and I am in Grandview Yard. Um, but what I when I send them is um, a note and it's, you know, please fill out the attached forms, one set for each of you, uh, she was also bringing her husband in later and send them back to me. Um, and so I sent over the forms. I've got my intake form. I sent over the um, digestive evaluation and I sent over the Better Nutrition Journal. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to know all of this information. So I actually have a fundamental rule with my patients, which is if I don't have the information 24 hours before um, our appointment, I cancel our appointment. Um, and that is just for me um, on that part. And I wanted, Janine, I am going to get to you. It, Absolutely. Janine has a question about recommendations of powdered versus um, pill for magnesium and glycinate versus citrate, et cetera. So we are going to dive into that for sure. So I had her fill out and just to um, maintain confidentiality, I didn't go highlight this too much with asking the questions, but you know, she threw in a lot of things on there about her regularity and how are things. And um, one of the things that I learned, you know, easy things that I was picking up on, she's drinking sparkling water. I always remind people bubbles in, bubbles in, bubbly, you know, we stay bubbly. And so, you know, for anyone who's dealing with any of that gas and bloating and that kind of a thing. Um, but I asked questions, uh, you know, in the digestive evaluation, I actually got a lot of information right off the bat. And with her nutrition journal, um, which goes through, the Better Nutrition Journal goes through how are you feeling in the morning when you wake up? Um, what do you have to eat and drink at different pit stops throughout the day? What are you taking? How do you feel about your exercise? How do you feel about your sleep? Just these different things. So what I was able to gather all before she came in was this is um, now how I would start this case study. Susan, age 54, is a busy executive. She travels overseas regularly. Her family history includes heart disease. Her menopause started at about age five, 50, and she gained uh, five, uh, has gained five pounds. Her BMI is now 24, not the 23. She has a history as a smoker. She takes a multivitamin and fish oil, occasional Ambien for sleep, et cetera, et cetera. I, I won't read through everything that I read through before, but what her Better Nutrition Journal revealed to me is that she's backloading. And what I mean by backloading is she's actually not having much of anything earlier in the day, and she is backloading. She's having her calories in the evening, and she's also having her wine in the evening. And of course, she avoids gluten and carbohydrates. Now, what I learned from her digestive evaluation is that she's complaining of constipation. She takes a fiber supplement. Remember, I told you before, 
the doctor's information had asked about um, her intake form there was about, uh, um, do you take any supplements? That did not appear there. Um, she complains of bloating. Um, when I did these other evaluations, the magnesium, the calcium, the sodium, potassium, we learned her sodium is actually okay, but her potassium and her magnesium are insufficient and her calcium is great even though she's avoiding dairy. Um, it's a, actually a little bit above the RDA from food and supplements. So um, here I have uh, what my recommendations are. I'm going to go into them more specifically um, in a moment. I just wanted to ask if anyone has any questions about the terms that I'm using here. So basically, um, the difference between the original assessment done here and the information I knew going into my session with her and what I now know based on using better intake forms, better nutrition assessments, um, was all of the stuff that's in the black in terms of what I was able to figure out. And of course, um, I didn't list all the little items that I learned from the better digestive evaluation. I learned more pieces. I kind of just summarized these here. Um, so needless to say, I, Ashley, was much better informed going in and could get much more specific in terms of what I was going to do as for the recommendations. And as I said, these were ultimately what my recommendations are, but now I'd love to go through them um, with you. Okay, I'm just checking the questions. I'm doing everything. Okay, uh, so Deanna, would you be willing to, let me just see. Um, share your form or format? Yes. So I'm sharing everything with all of you. Um, so my company uh, creates all of these forms. Um, we have all of these available um, and uh, the betternutritionprogram.com backslash practitioner. You can go there. Also at the end, I have a, an offer for you um, specifically because you're working with full script. So um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you explain backloading again? Sure, Andrea, this is one of my favorite terms to use. So backloading is basically when we have a lot of people that um, wake up in the morning and they may or may not eat anything in the morning, um, but they are, uh, and sort of throughout the day, they're kind of light eaters, or they might forget to eat lunch and that kind of a thing. And then as we're going through into the afternoon, it starts, and basically they're backloading, they're taking in a lot of their calories and nutrients in the back half of the day. Um, and so, and really the back third of the day. And what we know is that's really much harder on digestion, and it's also going to impact sleep, um, and it likely is going to prevent, um, especially belly fat loss is something that um, for women, especially menopausal women, um, I found that backloading often correlates with that inability to lose weight despite um, effective exercising and even following, you know, better overall nutrition, a dietary um, uh, intake. So the timing um, will make a difference and that's what the backloading is, is pointing out. Um, sometimes there are factors as it relates to backloading where people just are also not feeling well in the morning and that's why they're eating more uh, during the day. So, but that's backloading. Okay. Kathy, how did you figure out the deficiency, the blood test? Um, Kathy, I'm wondering which, um, or blood test. Okay, so no blood test, no, nothing else blood test was done between what I, um, what the doctor had presented over to me and then what I uh, went and did. But what I did have her do was fill out the digestive evaluation, the better nutrition forms. And then, you know, you raise a really good question. I sort of like sort of went over, skipped over a step because I'm so used to doing it in my practice. When she sent me this stuff over, I actually sent her back um, the evaluations um, because I had seen and I was curious so that I could have the information ahead of time, the magnesium, the potassium, and the sodium evaluation. Um, I usually do that if uh, the all three of these mineral evaluations, if somebody is coming in for blood pressure anyway. Um, and I think in, in this instance, I might not have done it initially. I'm not sure why, but I sent those and got those results before, and I actually must have added the calcium evaluation um, before she came in to see me. Um, I, I want to be clear I didn't do I didn't test for a deficiency so I think this is another lexicon term which is that deficiencies to me are what I think of as like clinically, if your body doesn't have enough um, for it to, uh, and it, it's sending off the alarm bells, like um, if your blood didn't have enough magnesium, we'd probably uh, be having this conversation in the hospital instead of um, over email and then you know in our initial session. So what I focus on is they're not getting the optimal levels or they're at least not using the RDA. So all of our tools at the Better Nutrition Program are assessments done to see if you're at least meeting the RDA. So for 
for magnesium, that's 400 for most adults. And um, for potassium, that's about 4,700. And I always remind people then that a banana has 400. So, you know, most adults are not getting in the 4,700 milligrams. Um, but even for something that sounds lower, like 400 milligrams, most adults are not, 70% of women um, adults are not even getting in enough um, magnesium. What test do you use? Um, so the better nutrition evaluations, Kathy, are what I was using there. What was in her original fiber supplement? So I, Emily is on to something. So we, I did not have that information. We just knew that she was taking a fiber supplement. So when you bring in, when you fill out my um, intake form, one of the things that I do on my intake form back here where she was filling it out is I ask you to fill out your journal. So it's three days worth of a journal, but I also ask you to take a photo front and back of all of the supplements that you take and send them over to me. So Emily, you are on to a big aha. Um, backloading is different versus intermittent fasting, exactly, because when you are intermittent fasting, and this is really important, we actually have a better nutrition guide to fasting that we developed with um, Kristen Kirkpatrick, an amazing dietitian, um, because this was really important to point out that when you are intermittent fasting, if you're shrinking the amount of time during which you're consuming food um, or shrinking and or shrinking the amount of calories, you still want to follow pit stopping throughout the day as opposed to lump, like just having all of your nutrients at one point in the day. Most of the time, that's a better nutrition recommendation. How do you do the magnesium and the calcium evaluation? So I'm going to go through those a little bit, um, but I'm also happy to, at the end, I'll, I'll share with you a little bit more about how, how all of these work. So the magnesium and the calcium evaluations look exactly, these are so 1.0. They're quizzes just like this. Um, and they would ask you things like about food. So you would see here the foods and um, we have them done by portion size. And we just ask somebody, how often are you having that? And then the second area might be beverages. The third area might be supplements. So for example, on the magnesium one, we have, um, something that says, is your supplement, do, is the, is, does your multi have magnesium uh, uh, in it? And then it's, do, is it magnesium oxide? Does your multi have calcium in it, right? So it's going to ask those questions. Again, no judgment on any of this, um, because we might find out that that is actually the right multi for somebody. Um, but we want to make sure that we have that information. And then what would happen is they would fill out all of this. And at the end, they can either get the recommendations or they can share the results with you and um, you can go over the recommendations. You are welcome, Andrea. Backloading is often how intermittent fasting people eat in your experience. Kathy, you are exactly right on that part. And it's actually one of the reasons that intermittent fasting is often not effective. Um, do I have any information on pregnancy and severe anemia? Absolutely. So um, we have the iron evaluation. We also have an iron guide um, that really focus, excuse me, an iron menu um, that also focuses on how you can get that in and a lot of our tools. And we also have a package of tools for specifically for pregnancy um okay oh and i did not say intermittent fasting is not effective just want to christina thank you for asking the question because if i did i i did not intend at all to communicate that in fact i think it can be highly effective but i think the key point to understand is that when someone is intermittent fasting they don't get to give up on better nutrition principles they actually have to apply them and that means you still need to look at nutrient balance you still need to look at frequency you still need to look at the quality of what you're taking in the quantity of what you're taking in at one time as well and that's in our fasting guide. Okay, so let me come back to um, some of these pieces and why um, we uh, were focused on this. So one of the really interesting things, and I think it was Emily, I'm gonna give Emily credit, um, her fiber supplement had licorice root. Emily, can you even believe that she was constipated, um, was complaining of constipation, took the fiber supplement, um, and like many of us, so she came back from a travel and was so constipated, and she had seen a chiropractor a couple of years ago and reached out to the chiropractor, I have to give her credit, she reached out because she thought her constipation might be related to, you know, uh, needing an adjustment, right, that her body was, um, you know, something from the travel, and so um, he was unable to see her at the time, but recommended a fiber supplement from his store, and I'm going to talk about why I love full script because he would not be just recommending this, um, they would actually be referring them, our patients, to us, and um, he had her take the fiber supplement, and she did what all of us would do, which is when you get recommended something that's going to help you go to the bathroom, and you haven't been going to the 
bathroom for at least three days. She didn't take one serving of it. She took several servings of it. And because it worked, she kept taking it. And when she kept taking it, um, her blood pressure just started to climb a little bit higher and higher and higher. Two weeks after um, she ended up going to, the, to her doctor, her primary physician, because she was not feeling well, her primary physician referred her to the cardiologist. So she went into the cardiologist with a history of heart disease, with high blood pressure, um, and told the cardiologist she took takes a multi and fish oil, never came up about digestion, never came up about the fiber supplement. And that fiber supplement was certainly playing a massive role in her um, because of the licorice root. So Emily, you are you get the the um, apple for the sleuthing on all of that. Um, and I am going to come back. I know I've been answering questions as we go along. I want to make sure I get through this protocol um, just to sort of explain her better health plan. And then I'm going to come back to the questions. So everyone's going to get theirs answered. So um, at this point, I actually removed the fiber supplement and talked to her about how we had to tune up her digestion. Um, she was so happy that with the removal of the fiber supplement, I actually called the doctor while she was in the office with me and we agreed she didn't have to go on the blood pressure medication if she went off the fiber supplement um, we ended up doing uh, glutagenics um, and I explained what I was going to be doing as a digestive tune-up protocol glutagenics she was going to be taking once a day bifidobacteria to, to get in because her bloating, um, she was not taking any probiotic and her bloating had been um, ongoing, but she had also had a couple of courses of antibiotics um, as we started to have a conversation earlier um, based on, I think it was a dental surgery that she had had. Um, I also advised, especially for travel and for right now, while we were trying to break down some of these foods and especially bringing back in some of the carbohydrates, she was avoiding um, digestive enzymes. I love transformation. And I, um, the one that I think I was recommending here was their digest. And then I decided to use the magnesium powder from Innate. Um, somebody was asking about the differences. So I find magnesium oxide to be pretty ineffective. I find that citrate and glycinate and some of the others, and you, many of you know much, much more about this um, or practice and, and use it uh, as much, if not more than, than me on that part, where we there might be different reasons. Um, citrate tends to be um, less expensive, so that might be a reason that it's approachable. But for someone who's having bloating and having some issues um, in terms of um, uh, getting, um, you know, just sort of her uh, her system to be moving along, uh, I find that the powder is just really effective um, because the body then doesn't have to be focused on breaking it down. And I also like to use the powder going into the evening. Remember, this is somebody who every once in a while was take was using Ambien, and so I wanted to. My long term goal is to be able to have her not have that Ambien crutch so we were using the magnesium in that space and so we were doing the digestive protocol for six weeks and I uh, at the time that I saw her I calendared a one uh, a check-in by email once a week for the six weeks um, and we give her a continuum on a scale of one to better how are you doing and we, we go through that part and then um, I also adjusted her multivitamin to optimize for life stage and her current nutrient intake. Now that I knew what was going on, um, I, I was able to look at, okay, like I'm okay with the iron. Um, we, we were in this dance with the iron and the, um, uh, and the um, constipation. And so I relied on iron actually from food sources. And so I made more of those food iron recommendations rather than supplements at that point in time and gave her some food recommendations from our iron menu that include, tomato. she loves tomato sauce, so that was great. And um, getting in some of that vitamin C. I upgraded her fish oil to a full spectrum one. Um, and instead of just being an EPA and DHA, I wanna make sure she's getting in that gamma linoleic fatty acid, which you could do from hemp and hemp foods, uh, which I also was talking her about for um, hormone balance and all of these things and you'll see that that's part of my recommendation but also I just wanted to make sure she was getting in all of those omegas um, so I was doing that and I also added a CoQ10 um, I find as far as antioxidant you know this is somebody who did have a history of smoking um, you know she we had mentioned before she'd been on some anti antioxidants she did mention to me she's uh, concerned that her brain, you know, she was asking me some questions about brain health and those kinds of things. So we added in the CoQ10. Um, and then we focused on optimizing her magnesium. She was thrilled to learn about um, dark chocolate being a great source of um, of magnesium, especially uh, the higher up on the cacao that you went. Um, so we really focused in on getting that in um, also as an option for her. And I gave her some low carb examples of how to get in that, um, that uh, chocolate to get in the magnesium. And then we focused on optimizing her potassium intake. Um, I gave her some menu options that um, what that combined the iron, the potassium, and the magnesium so that I wasn't like pinpointing each one of these because we're already past my golden rule of only five 
things to focus on. But one of the things that we identified was that because she was so low on her potassium intake, she was often feeling dehydrated um, and she felt like that played out in her skin. And also uh, we were talking a little bit about sugar cravings and things like that. So we did address that a little bit. Overall with her nutrient intake, we talked about how being more balanced throughout the day. I gave her examples of how to take from what she was currently eating and how to uh, make them more nutrient balanced um, throughout the day uh, with what she was currently eating. And so we went through that. Now, one of my least favorite things that anyone can ever do is put on a prescription pad. I think it's like malpractice to put on a prescription pad, stress reduction, or try to reduce your stress. Like to me that like, it gets me so stressed because I'm so angry on behalf of my patients. So I taught her the four, seven, eight breath, and I taught her to use 10 rounds of it, um, whether she's on the plane or um, at different moments in time, especially when she feels like we gave, we kind of did a whole thing of, is your stress on a scale of one to 10? How are you experiencing your stress? So if your stress is a seven or above, we wanted to do the four, seven, eight breath. And I also showed her how to do body twists to relieve body stress, but also to engage digestion, things like chair twists or when you're laying down, you pull your knees in and stuff. And then I really like the Calm app. I think there are a lot of different apps um, for meditation, but she seemed to be an app person. So that part was great. I mentioned hemp seeds and hemp seed oil before. Um, I just think so important for women as we're going through um, hormonal changes. You mentioned pregnancy before. I'm a really big fan. And I also had the conversation with her about how um, hemp, hemp seeds seeds, hemp seed oil, hemp menu. This is not, I'm not having the CBD conversation or this isn't a THC conversation. This is really about um, the hemp foods. And so I was very clear about that piece, which I think needs a lot more explanation in today's uh, environment. And so with all of this, we collectively agreed um, First of all, when I sent it over to her, I went through like a hierarchy of things that we want to work on and how we stage all of that out. And I don't have all that to share with you, but I'm always happy to have a conversation with a practitioner about how to take it to the next step. Um, and then also um, we went back to her doctor and he agreed um, to monitor uh, blood pressure from one month. If she monitor it, she could be uh, could, could stay off the medication. So I'm happy to report this patient um, did go off. It sounds like so like, voila, you know, the patient never had to be on medication. She lost the five pounds. Um, she's still pretty like a high powered executive stressed. Um, although I think at this point she's pretty close to retirement. So we've had some fun conversations uh, at that point, but doing so much better. And um, she said to me, the one thing I learned is that I'll never um, take a supplement that my chiropractor recommends. And I said, that's actually not the lesson um, to have learned. But the lesson that I want you to learn is that you, before taking a supplement, we always have to have your total nutrition assessed to figure out what is the role of that particular supplement. And then we also need to know the ingredients that are in that supplement. So she promised me before taking anything ever that she would uh, run those by me so that the situation didn't happen again. Um, okay, so you can get there. The moral of the story is with a better nutrition assessment, you can get there when you know here, where is she today? And so my belief is that you are in my practice, um, that when you help them set their GPS, right? When you help them figure out, turn on their locations, where are you guys today, then she's better prepared for her session with you, you're better informed, and we can develop this better uh, personalized health plan. And when it is personalized, what makes it better is she is able to do it. So with all that, I'm going to dive into more of our questions. Um, I wanted to welcome you to um, optimize uh, outcomes powered by better nutrition with Fullscript. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm so grateful for our, our ability to work with them because um, I have been one of those people, I don't know if you can relate, but I like cut and pasted Amazon links. I spend a lot of time now telling people, no, this, this um, product is not the same as that product. No, just because this one's less expensive. I don't want you to take that one, you know, all these other things. And when I explain to them how Fullscript works, that we can work together, that I can monitor what they're taking in, that I can send them their notes again, that I can send them a text message, you know, all these different things. Um, it's such an easy win. Uh, so what I wanted to offer all of you who are using Fullscript is, 30% um, off a checkout for any of our evaluations, um, for any of our guides, for any of the menus. Uh, we have over 120 tools at this point. Do click, yes, you are a practitioner if you purchase an evaluation like the digestive evaluation because we also have a provider referral network if you're interested in being referred for patients, uh, if you're interested in being referred to businesses as an expert. And also, um, if you are interested in collaborating with us on any tools or being part of our reviewer panel because every one of our tools is evaluated by experts. Um, 
and practitioners as experts. Uh, and so we love to do that. And we're also always updating our tools. So with that, I'm going to go back to the questions that are existing and please um, share any others or if you have any thoughts coming out of this. Um, and again, I'm just so grateful for your time. So we have, um, have you ever had, let's see, have you ever had a situation where subjective evaluation by the patient does not match labs or the recommendations based on the subjective answers of the patients do not did not provide results? Um, I think so, Margaret. I think that we probably all have had those situations. Um, labs are imperfect. Um, they are one of the tools, but I think that what we need to be doing is putting all of those tools together. And one of the key things that I often find is that we're missing something. You know, we're we're like these sluice and we have to go in and, and, and figure that part out um, and we can't make recommendations just based on subjective um, so it's really that um, collaboration of the subjective as well as the clinical evidence but as I was mentioning with something like magnesium or potassium those that um, clinical evidence is only going to tell us a part of the story like people are coming remember what does everyone want they want better health they don't just want to be in the place where their um, you know their blood has enough magnesium they want all their cells to have enough magnesium you know those kinds of things um, how about an evaluation of enzymatic activity? So that's a, it's a great question. It's not something that we currently provide in terms of our tools um, from an assessment standpoint, although I do like to assess um, you know, what are coming in from, um, you know, uh, how are enzymes working, and that really goes in terms of the digestive health piece. Emily, and with her blood pressure, yeah, 100%, Emily, you nailed it. Um, is it safe for pregnancy for those clients that are constipated during pregnancy? Um, I think that, um, Miriam, I'm trying to understand what, what is what safe for pregnancy. If you can give me a little bit more information. Um, oh, is mag maybe is magnesium safe for clients? Yes. So one thing that's always safe for clients during pregnancy, I shouldn't say always safe for clients during pregnancy, but typically safe for clients during pregnancy are food sources, especially if they're whole food sources, meaning um, that they aren't fortified or, or have added ingredients that have functional, you know, the adaptogens and herbs and things that we would need to be uh, careful about. So I think I would probably to work with constipation during pregnancy, I would probably take an approach of looking at um, whole food sources of magnesium. How can we make sure that they're getting enough of that and maybe add in a small amount in conjunction and with approval from their doctor of um, a um, uh, of a magnesium supplement with the understanding that they shouldn't increase their dose, you know, without conversation on that part. Uh, and the type of iron might also affect it. It is why I like Mega Foods um, Iron Builder, Blood Builder on that part. Gold Star, Emily, for sure. Um, did you generate this great quote based on intake forms or did you also run? So, you know, it's a really quick question. Thank you, Amy. I ran no functional labs. Um, so I actually don't do a lot of the lab work myself um, with the, I do work with a lot of integrative and functional practitioners. And I use that term like kind of like it's one in the same. So I apologize if I'm, you know, I go back to the day when it was like called complementary or alternative medicine, you know, on, on that part. Um, and so uh, I did not. But um, if we needed any additional, we, we could have um, had to go. And Emily, no worries. Uh, you get all the credit there for what you figured out. Uh, glutagenics does not have plain licorice root. Great, great catch Susan Naylor it has deglycerizinated licorice when you have the DGL in there you're removing the part that would have the impact on blood pressure um, so really great one toe tensing is great uh, wherever you are okay and um, that like totally for just being able to do an immediate relaxation Susan that's such a great reminder um, how do you join M Mila um, I would love to have you join so there are three different ways that people join they join by purchasing an evaluation like the digestive evaluation the magnesium evaluation and just to make that clear um, when you purchase an evaluation once you can use it in an unlimited capacity in your in your practice so the 24 or the 29 dollars that you spend once you can use for umpteen amount of patients patients. Um, and, uh, you know, so that part would be available to you if you purchase all of our tools. So we have some people that sign up for the year uh, or to, not for the year to purchase. The, they buy the whole shop because they're like, hey, we want all these tools and we want all the updates and the ability to connect with you and go over how to use them and all that stuff. Um, then you're automatically uh, available for the um, provider network. We do have you fill out a quick form just so that I can make sure you're truly a provider. My team sends those over to me to vet. Um, and then the final piece is if you work 
with us on um, an existing tool to update it, or if you collaborate to develop a tool, then you would be part of the referral network. Um, and then uh, what do you think about Epsom? Yes. So um, have I used SpectraCell? It, you know, uh, Robert, it's been uh, a few years, um, but I certainly have um, used SpectraCell in the past. And I've also evaluated, um, I've also worked with practitioners that use, but yes, I love Epsom salt or magnesium salt baths. Um, that's great. Uh, thank you, Carmina. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so great uh, to be to connect. Um, can you touch again on why you avoid licorice? Ah, right. So the licorice, when it's not deglycerizing and needed in there, um, it can impact and elevate blood pressure in most of us, and especially she was taking a higher dose. So you want the deglycerized natal licorice for the healing if you're working on, you know, like uh, esophageal healing or um, mucosal layer healing, but you don't want you want to avoid that um, for because it can spike blood pressure. Um, and where, uh, yes. So if you head to the better, this is for Miriam. If you head to the better new nutritionprogram.com you can head it's backslash nutrition shop um, and you will see under the packages we have the one for pregnancy uh, we also have um, the individual tools that you can see on on there a lot of stool analysis which helps a lot with digestive issues Robert absolutely on that part absolutely looking at stool assessment um, but we also want to know the stool analysis is, is a great tool for us to add in conjunction with all of this um, and Miriam, yes, on magnesium or fiber. Um, so uh, yeah, so Regina, thanks so much for asking about the individual products. Um, there are a range of different magnesiums that I like. Um, currently, uh, I think the one that I have at my house I like, I love using the uh, innate, the one from innate, I like using from Pure Essence. Um, and with Natural Calm, the only thing I will say about Natural Calm, it's been my go-to for years. Um, and I've had some people have said of late, and I don't know, um, I don't know if like where to trace this, but we've been getting some complaints about it, like fizzing more. And so I just don't know if there's been a change in the formulation at all. Um, I used to work with them for over 10 years and I don't work with them any longer. I still love the product. Um, so I highly, I just want to make sure that it's still the same. Um, thank you. As a midwife, Miriam, I can't think of anything better. So I love it. Um, you are so welcome, Patty. Uh, thank you so much, Sally. And I think with that, and because it is 101 um, and you are, I, that last minute, you probably had a million other things that you could you need to do and could be doing. On behalf of Fullscript and Natural Partners, um, and thank you so much uh, from me, we just want to say thank you so much for your time. And I hope that um, you will use these nutrition assessment uh, tools to help you figure out how to recommend supplements that can uh, collaborate with the foods that somebody is needing to take in. So that better total nutrition recommendation um, that you can be making with Fullscript. Thank you, Amy. Uh, so so much um, so excited go go enjoy the kids um, thank you Miriam and thank you Kathy all right everybody have a wonderful wonderful day we really appreciate you